Parker, um, project lead for the Eclipse Agent Modeling Project and founder at Metascape. And in this screencast, uh, we're going to look further at how you might design an agent-based model. And we're going to do that uh, by actually running the epidemic model that we looked at in the last screencast. So here's our epidemic model. And what we're going to do is simply click on the model and then uh, click this Execute Escape Model button. And that'll automatically open up the agent execution view. And we can see a view here of um, the agent-based model as it's running. And so um, one view we have is the chart view. And we'll just get rid of the, um, uh, the um, uh, whatever you call that thing. Um, and uh, look at what's going on with the agent-based model as it runs. In the right-hand side here, we have an overhead view of our agents uh, moving around on the landscape. And we can see that over time, um, we start out here, if we um, stop the model for a second, uh, we can zoom in and um, look at some of these agents. We can see that we have some agents that start out um, in infected status, and um, then they transition through these different, um, through these different statuses. And we can uh, look at that closer by clicking on the agents and examining their properties. So, for example, we can see this agent is uh, symptomatic infectious, um, this agent is simply susceptible, um, and so on. And this agent has a contact transmission probability 0.11, this agent is a little, uh, a little higher, this agent's higher still, and so on. Um, and let's see, we'll go back to 100% view here. Um, and let's just let the model run forward. And we can see that very quickly um, this virus spreads throughout the population. And we're um, nicely recovering the shape um, that, that we saw in the classic equation model, but you'll notice that it's a lot bumpier. And there are a lot, uh, there seem to be a lot more uh, things going on here. We have um, infections going up and going down even in this relatively simple model. Um, so everybody gets sick and then there's this outcome and um, uh, pretty quickly here we'll be um, back in a stable state which is um, nearly everyone um, having uh, having caught the disease and then um, either overcoming it or um, in a few cases down in this uh, um, in this curve here uh, dying. Let's look at um, how we might be able to uh, experiment a bit with the model and um, so I'm going to create a parameterization here. Um, we'll just call it study and I'll open this up and I need to define need to define a model. Um, in this case, we want to use the epidemic model. And then let's just change some of the uh, parameterizations from their defaults. Um, one of the interesting things we can do um, is set the uh, periods of uh, the various the, for the various statuses, um, to different values. And so, for example, um, we could get rid of um, oops, we could get rid of the um, period of initial infection, um, of asymptomatic infection altogether. Um, and uh, we could set the values, um, set the symptomatic um, infection period shorter. Um, so let's see, we can do that here. Um, we'll make this, oops, we'll make this um, eight and we'll make We'll make the maximum value 64. Um, and then finally, let's set the initial um, let's set the initial transmission probability down as well. Or sorry, the initial infection uh, probability down. Um, we'll I think it's currently 0.05, so we'll make it 0 .0, um, Let's make it 0 0.01. Because one thing that we're interested in here is exploring um, 
the effect of initial conditions. So here we're starting out with fewer people and um, of course because um, you're not m moving um, when you're symptomatic infectious as we define the model, um, you're not moving around as much and, and don't have as much possibility of transmitting to others and the period of infection is lower too. So you would expect uh, over time for there to be fewer infections and as we'll see that's exactly what we get. Now, one really interesting aspect of this version of the model is that we can see if we look at the red curve, uh, it was flat for a while and now it's dropping. Uh, there really are regions of uh, where there have been a number of infections and, 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 um, and recoveries and so on, and regions where uh, nobody has become infected at all. Um, and in fact, if we run the model forward, we'll see there's a, there's a whole group of people who um, never get infected. Um, in contrast to uh, the equation model and, and um, the original model. And as we can see, it actually takes a very long time for the, um, the, all of the infections to actually die out. Well, let's, let's try setting the, um, the period of uh, infection even lower and see what happens. In some cases in this particular model uh, the disease has never really had the chance to take off at all. In other areas there has been a, a, a localized um, a localized area of um, diseases occurring. So here we have a case of um, a kind of underlying uh, disease that seems to be um, sort of very slowly uh, moving through the population. Um, it doesn't really go away, um, but it never really reaches an, a pandemic or even an epidemic um, um, level. But over time, um, the population as a whole seems to gain uh, immunity. As you're hopefully getting a flavor for, there are many, many um, different ways that we can explore a model like this, and we haven't really even begun to um, get into the depths and, and, and interesting aspects of this model. Um, but uh, just for a little bit of fun at the end, we'll look at um, a 3D version of this model that we've created. And um, sometimes these visualizations can really help us to understand um, uh, more directly what's going on with the model, um, sometimes see things that um, um, we weren't able to see otherwise. You can find out more about the agent modeling platform at eclipse.org slash amp. And you can find out more about Metascape at metascapeabm.com. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.